Welcome back to The Modern Ham, where we are connected in new old ways. Today, some new details, or maybe several days ago, some new details emerged about the ARRL service disruption uh, or the cyber attack that happened several months ago. And we got some new internal information from a uh, meeting that was recorded and an interview with a Mr. Mickey Baker, which is one of the... Uh, directors over at the ARRL. So we're going to unpack uh, some of the stuff that was said in this meeting as well as a new update from the ARRL on their service disruption page. And I just wanted to give my input as a cybersecurity professional on some of the things that I heard because some of it's pretty shocking. Uh, and also just make sure that I am following up with the video that I did several months ago when this initially happened. Let's go ahead and get into it. So the source material is going to be in the description, direct links. The, the meeting itself, the tech information kind of starts at 16 minutes. That's when they get into the, the juicy meat and potatoes. But I'm going to summarize basically all the important bits in this video and go line by line and, and just kind of talk about it. I just want to also preface this by saying... Uh, if any of the individuals at the ARRL are watching this, this isn't an attempt to offend anybody. Uh, this isn't an attempt to, you know, tear apart your IT department. Uh, this is me as a uh, IT professional. I do server stuff at home, and I even have a um, exploit published for a ham radio software just a few weeks ago where I. I published it as a CVE. So I have a little bit of knowledge about threat actors, uh, threat hunting, and uh, cybersecurity in general. So please don't take this as just another guy ragging on the IT department. I'm going to try to offer maybe a little bit of uh, input uh, to the situation. So one of the things that we first learned here was that there was backups of the, the databases and things like that uh, by one of the previous IT department heads. Uh, and they had backed it up to an Amazon uh, cloud. And what if you don't know much about ransomware, uh, the smart guys, the smart attackers will infect systems and they will lay dormant long enough so that the backups themselves are, are, are infected. So if an organization's only taking backups monthly or even yearly, they may wait, you know, a year and months and, and things like that just to make sure that the backups themselves have been affected by the cyber attack. Or they may lay dormant and wait to encrypt everything until they're, they know they have access to those backups so that they may delete them. Backups to the threat actors are kind of like a, a liability on their part. Because if they are trying to you know squeeze money out of an organization to decrypt files that they've encrypted in a ransomware attack, and that organization has a good backup, well, they're less likely to get that money. So these guys are going to do everything that they can to make sure that they... Uh, either encrypt those backups uh, or eliminate them altogether. And it sounds like that's what they did. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why the ARRL had to pay that ransom and the backups did not work. Speaking of the ransom, it sounds like uh, originally the uh, the attackers wanted $5 million and the insurance company that the ARRL used to, uh, uh, to hire a negotiator was able to negotiate that down to $1 million and they were able to actually decrypt Mostly all of the information uh, that the attackers encrypted and recover it, but there are a few stipulations, and we'll talk about that too. They were not able to decrypt the finance information, uh, from what I understand. I don't really know what that means to us as amateurs, uh, besides maybe magazine subscriptions and weird things like that. Uh, they did not get credit card information. Uh, all of that stuff is usually audited by an external entity to make sure that it is in compliance. Uh, so that kind of saved their butts there, that their regulatory guidance that has to make sure that all of that stuff is secure. Unlike the databases over at the Log of the World and things like that, which is kind of just like on them at that point. So going forward, it sounded like Mickey Baker kind of inquired with the new IT head about uh, there's new backup appliances being uh, installed, and he seemed a little skeptical about what they were. And it sounds like he actually asked the new IT department, hey, have, you know, have you tested them? And from what I can understand from the meeting, they haven't tested those backup solutions now, which uh, to me is kind of like a red flag going forward. Uh, you should always test your backups you, or just assume that they don't exist uh, if you're not going to test them. So the only reason that the log of the world system came back up was because they um, hired a or the previous creator of the software developer. Uh, I think his name is a John Bloom. 
and he came in to basically maybe rewrite it. I'm not quite sure to what extent, but uh, that is, he said that that is the only reason that Log of the World came back up. One of the biggest uh, surprises that came out of this was the fact that uh, Mickey said that the Log of the World server was running on Cent OS 6.3. Cent OS was, uh, 6 was released back in 2012, which is 12 years ago. And in itself, that's not really a problem as long as it's still getting security updates. And Cent OS 6.3, as of 2020, no longer got security updates. I'm not sure what avenue the attackers used to get into these systems, but if that is the common trend among all, mostly the servers running ARRL systems, then it wouldn't be surprising if they were able to leverage a regular exploit uh, in order to get access to these stuff uh, and not so much a social engineering attack. Uh, if you were running outdated software and outdated servers, especially from four years ago, there have been a lot of nasty exploits that have been released uh, in the past four years. A lot of things that... Um, what we call remote e code execution, which is the thing that I uh, talked about in released uh, uh, disclosure about with BBQ several weeks ago. I'm not sure to what extent they were attacked, but I would imagine it would be too difficult if most of these servers are running uh, operating systems that haven't been updated for four years. It wouldn't be too difficult. My opinion on hiring the same individual to come back and work on Log of the World to get it running. And from what I can tell, they're still running on Cent OS 6.3. Uh, at this point, um, first of all, the, the operating system needs to be updated to a more current operating system. This should be used as an opportunity for uh, the ARRL to upgrade those operating systems to something more modern. You know, we have Ubuntu server, we have Debian server, we have a, a lot of... Uh, free resources that we can tap into and even run in an enterprise environment that are still getting patches for the latest uh, security issues. And so that shouldn't have been the, the go back to try to go back to Cent OS. Uh, that shouldn't be a thing. And, and the fact that they're doing that moving forward is kind of depressing, actually, um, that they weren't able to just take the situation and go ahead and just move forward with their technology. But another kind of red flag for me is, and this is not to knock the developer. I don't know John Bloom. I don't know uh, his you know his criteria. But I'm, and I'm not quite sure how long Log of the World was developed, how long ago. But in the programming world, uh, you know, every five years there is a new revolutionary change in programming languages that kind of shakes up the industry. And one of the biggest and most important changes in the past decade has been more secure programming practices. And that comes with new languages such as Rust that offers uh, or forces developers to, to perform memory safe uh, decisions when programming things to make it harder for people to exploit and just make it more secure in general. Uh, one of the things I talked about when I published the BBQ exploit was the fact that it was coded in a language uh, that allowed the developers to create unsafe uh, buffers in memory. And that's how I was able to leverage the exploits that I did. Uh, and so I would hope that if John Bloom is coming back, I'm not sure if he's been stepped away from the, this industry for a while, but hopefully he has updated himself in the more modern uh, programming aspects and is using a memory safe uh, language with modern uh, best practices. Um, I think it was mentioned in the in the meeting that it could have been Python. That's a little skeptical for me. Just uh, Python's great, uh, but Python doesn't scale well. And with the database as big as uh, Log of the World, I wonder if they would run into uh, issues with speed when it comes to using Python to process that many records, uh, I guess time will tell. If not, I would highly recommend Rust would be the, the back-end programming for the database. And the thing is, the Log, the log of the World database, uh, it's not that complicated on the surface level. Uh, people put in queries to search a database and it brings tables up front. It's not anything new, it's, it's pretty straightforward and it probably shouldn't take a rocket scientist to devise an application to inter interface with that database. So there was a committee that was formed uh, at the request, it sounds like, of Mickey Baker to help uh, in IT advisory. And he said that the lead was given to a, de a developer at Apple, uh, but he also mentioned that she has no IT operations experience. 
So I don't really know what that means. I don't know her credentials, but uh, it sounds like she's trying to redo everything from scratch, which I think is the best option at this point. But that's conflicting with the fact that he said that they were still moving forward, uh, trying to get some older databases and, and older servers running, such as Fox Pro and CentOS. I think that's counterproductive. One of the problems that they're facing with the DX application running uh, is the fact that it was running uh, Fox Pro, which I think the latest supported operating system for Fox Pro was Windows 98. It's uh, well beyond its age. Um, it needs to go away. And so the problems that they were having was, hey, we need to get Fox Pro running because it has a database for DXC uh, to interface with Log of the World. And it sounds like they're, they've been advised to not run Windows 98 uh, and tie it with the internet somehow, which I think is a very uh, bad decision. So I think it's smart that they're not doing that. Now, the problem that they're coming in to, uh, to play here and the reason that the holdup is here is because they are having issues running Fox Pro, I guess, on modern operating systems that would be secure enough to expose uh, to external uh, threats or to the log of the world database. I have a couple of uh, opinions on that myself. One, uh, you should not be trying to run Fox Pro still. Again, it's time to move forward from this. Use this as an opportunity to... Uh, upgrade your technology stack, your software, even if it means some downtime, because it's not sustainable into the future. Uh, if you're having to hire uh, and bring back the original developer for these applications, such as you did with uh, John Bloom to come back and work on Log of the World, I would say that there is a systematic problem in the way that you're uh, managing your IT infrastructure. Uh, applications, internal applications for companies and organizations should not uh, should always be written in, in such a way that uh, department heads and developers can leave, but new people can still come in and work on the projects. And uh, with that, that means they they need very good documentation of the application API. They need to use modern programming languages. That way, when they do get new developers in, they are familiar with the technology stack that is being used. It sounds like I'm a little worried that they're not doing that. Going back to Fox Pro, uh, the right solution for the ARRL uh, moving forward would be to uh, try to find some third-party application to import all of the information in that Fox Pro database into a new, more modern uh, database ser server such as MySQL or MariaDB. The, if there's not a third-party application that can do that, uh, I'm sure that uh, it wouldn't take too much money to get someone to create some type of conversion or a Python application to take the data in that database and read it and convert it uh, into something that can be imported into my SQL or a new database. So that would be the correct answer is to get off Fox Pro and chop, stop trying to run 98, uh, Windows 98 securely. Um, that is the wrong answer in any way you look at it. You need advice, and that is the way you're going to go. The the uh, the way to go would be containerized uh, environments. So Windows 98 is old enough now where it can be emulated and containerized in a virtual environment. So you can have Fox Pro running in Windows 98 on a more modern operating system, such as you know Debian 12 or Ubuntu 22.04 or something other than CentOS run Windows 98 containerized in some way, uh, even um, or in a virtual environment, and only expose the very specific ports that are needed in and out of that container to get the info from Fox Pro over to Log of the World so that you can get DXC running. That way, if the virtual environment were compromised because it's running Windows 98, it would just be the virtual environment within that host and uh, the attacker would have to try to navigate out of one of those very specific static purpose-built ports in order to escape, which would be fairly difficult. Looking at the um, the actual notice from the ARRL, uh, it, this basically says most of what um, Mickey said in the meeting. DXCC software cannot run application. They can't get it to run uh, because it needs to run on Windows 98. Windows 98 has gone. This right here, this part about backups, this is, I guess, what they were saying. Um, they did make backups and it's gone. It does say there's some positive information here that they're talking about doing off-site um, 
backups, which is great. Um, air gapped, which is great. Uh, I just hope that they're still following the best practices because even with offsite and air gap backups, if those backups could be infected or they're not checked or the backup solution is tested, then the backups don't really matter at all. Anyways, the, they, fo they follow it up by saying the new IT environment is currently being rolled out, so the assertion that there is something wrong or staff are incompetent is not factual. And I'm betting that the ARRL are probably sick of people dogging on their IT department. I completely understand if you just keep getting like bashed over and over and over again after a cyber attack, you're going to get a little frustrated. Um, as long as they're making the right decisions moving forward, then sure, they are competent. But I will say this. If they are moving forward with running CentOS uh, 6.3 or CentOS 6 in general as their operating system, uh, that would be, uh, I would call that incompetency uh, if that decision is being made. Uh, if they are deciding to move forward with Log of the World running on uh, very old programming languages that are not memory safe that they can't bring new people in to update or fix uh, that or haven't been previously exposed to it i would say that would probably be a sign of incompetency and if they have a new backup solution but are not testing it in any way in the real world uh, or, or if they are trying to run uh, instead of migrate the information or Fox Pro to a new updated server software uh, and instead are still trying to run it on Windows 98, uh, even internally, I think that is a sign of incompetency. And that's just my raw opinion about things. This would be an opportunity for the ARL to upgrade their technology stack and start from scratch, uh, which it sounds like is probably what they need to do. I'm rooting for the ARRL in this. I want them to succeed. Obviously, they are the organization that would be advocating for uh, our rights as amateur radio operators. Whether you believe it or not, they're probably it's probably better that they are there. Now, if you want to give them money or not, that's up to you. Um, but it's just sad to see that organization, uh, me being in you know the, the cybersecurity industry and uh, fall so hard. Uh, and then the next big blow was to see that they're, they didn't have backups. Uh, that was really depressing to see because even in my home, I have a server environment that I run technology stack. Uh, I have tested backups there that I test regularly. And it's like, if I do this in my home as an individual, uh, it should have been done by the organization itself that means that nobody's been looking at those backups for a while to make sure that they were still there um i it's almost just in disbelief at some of the stuff that did come out like the fact that it was running sent os but here's the thing if all that stuff is remediated then we can move forward from this and maybe they can be better I want to say thanks to Mickey Baker for being so transparent about their IT infrastructure. I think they should be more transparent because um, if the ARRL had been this open or individuals have been this open about their IT infrastructure since the beginning, uh, then this probably wouldn't have happened. And there would have been a lot of pressure from professionals in the industry uh, to tell somebody there that, hey, we need to update this operating system. Uh, or, hey, we need to move this uh, database from Windows 98. Uh, it was this kind of a closed-off system, it sounds like, for the past 20 years, and, and nobody maybe even really touched it or, or whatever, and it's just been neglected. Uh, it, and it's, that's the right word for it. It's just been neglected for, for that long, and, and no one's took the reins to try to remediate that. So it's just kind of sad to see, but hopefully... And I'm trying to be optimistic here. The ARL will take this as a lesson learned and go forward and uh, maybe get some, some new faces to uh, pave the way forward with a new technology stack built on more secure and modern uh, programming and uh, IT infrastructure uh, standards. So anyways, thanks for watching and uh, 73 to you.